How's it going everyone? Wes Davis here. Welcome back to the channel. I've got a really special video for you guys today. I'm going to meet a new friend. He just got to Kaohsiung and in fact he just got to Taiwan. So I can't wait for you to meet him. He's got a really, really interesting story and I'm just going to show him a few of my favorite places here in Kaohsiung. So let's go. How's it going, Noel? Oh, hey, how's it going? Welcome to the channel. Yeah, nice to meet you, nice to meet you. After a long time, hey? A long time. Yeah. We've been in touch on Instagram for yeah. a couple months. Yeah. This is Noel. He has a very, very interesting story. So you actually moved from Canada. Yes. Where I'm also from. Yes. But Fellow Canadian. Fellow Canadian. <laughs> But you actually moved not by yourself. You brought your entire family That's right. across the world yeah. to live in Taiwan. Yeah. I so I'm just wondering what your history is. I mean, why did you choose Taiwan at all? We love Taiwan. We came here first in 1998 wow. and uh, been in a love affair with Taiwan for a long time. Anyway, 1998. <laughs> yeah. So Taiwan would have been a vastly different place it back then. It sure was. It was still an amazing place, but right. uh, a little bit different, a little bit more Wild West. Wild say. West, yeah. yeah. Maybe a few less regulations, yeah, you might say. Yeah, a few say. less regulations yeah. and uh, less MRT stops. For sure. No Gogoro. I love the Gogoro. So. Gogoro is awesome. Yeah. And back then you lived in Taipei, is that right? Yes, yeah, almost entirely, actually entirely in Taipei. Okay. So now we're down here in Kaohsiung, so. And how that. long have you been in Taiwan this time? About eight weeks now okay only yeah. eight weeks yeah and you said you for, you spent the first six weeks or so up in taipei yeah six weeks in taipei and now we've been down here three four weeks something like that so in Kaohsiung. yeah in a way you're an old school taiwan lover yes but also in a way you're kind of a newbie you got it because it's, you haven't really experienced i would say the modern day taiwan it's all new to me right <laughs> and back then you did learn some mandarin yes i did i studied a lot Try to get my Chinese going good. Yeah, do you want to introduce yourself a little hey, bit in Mandarin? What's the little man? Even how I don't know if you can tell by the way he speaks, but he has a YouTube channel. <laughs> yeah. You've got that kind of excited way of talking. That's right. Lo Ming Jia Ting. I can Xiao. So what's your YouTube channel about? It's just our experiences moving here, living yeah. here, uh, kind of immigrating to Taiwan. That's the general idea. Mm -hmm. What it's like as a family, all three of us, the experiences of us moving to Taiwan. I know a lot of Taiwanese, they maybe have family who have moved to Canada. Right. So it's a bit of a, a different take. Now this is three Cana crazy Canadians <laughs> moving, you know, not young, not young teachers or anything, but right. moving in their middle age to Taiwan to have a new life. If you don't mind me asking, how old are you? 50. You're just, 50. just turned 50. Ah, you look like a young 50. Uh, I try. <laughs> <laughs> And you came here with your Canadian wife. Yes. As well as your son. Yes, my wife Jenny and my son Cole. All three of us are on the channel. Great. Cole's quite the character and uh, he always he always brings us down to earth, you could say. Sure. So I will definitely link your channel, Noel, down below in the comments. Awesome. I would encourage you guys to go check it out because yeah, I really enjoyed meeting you, man. You seem like a genuine nice guy. Yeah, well, you know, it's great meeting you too and any support they can give, Lo Ming Jia Team. <laughs> Thanks, guys. So I wanted to ask you, you were doing what back in Canada before you came here? Right before I came here, believe it or not, I was a police officer. Police officer? Yes. And living in Winnipeg, Winnipeg Manitoba. Winnipeg, Manitoba, rough place. Pretty rough place, very cold place. Yeah, oh yeah, right now, minus 35 Celsius or something like that. My grandma grew up in Winnipeg. She used to tell us all kinds of stories that you know, you couldn't even go outside without yeah. just freezing your face off. Yeah. The streets would turn to ice. Yeah, yeah very... I had bad frostbite on my hands a few times as a police officer. Oh, I bet. So when you were a police officer, were you able to use your Mandarin that you had picked up in Taiwan? Quite a bit, actually. I got okay. to uh, interview victims, sometimes suspects, wow. uh, using Chinese. There are, are a few police officers in Winnipeg who speak Mandarin, but not many. So actually, I spoke it a fair bit in my time there. It would be once or twice a month. Wow. Actually, maybe more sometimes. So I'm sure that depend. would have been quite unusual for a police officer to say stop an Asian person or Chinese person and suddenly you speak practically fluent Chinese. Well, really fun was when I would walk into the room and I was the translator, just like in the movies, right? And they'd be like, well, we have the translator here and they're like, who, where, <laughs> who are you talking about? Right. And I'm just like, hey, ni hao. Ni hao. Uh, what's the jing sao? like, bang zhu li fan yi hao. Mm. like, huh? <laughs> It was great though, because you know, a lot of these people, especially victims, mm -hmm. uh, I would like to try and help them as much as I can. Okay. And you know, their voice normally isn't heard, especially if they sure. don't speak great English. 
and it was always a relief to them to have someone who could help them who spoke their language. So after all that, living in Taiwan so long ago, moving back to Canada, having a career as a police officer, yeah. what motivated you to move back to Taiwan after all those years? We love it here. <laughs> it's really that simple. Yeah. You know, it doesn't hurt that the cost of living is a bit lower, but mm -hmm. that's not the main motivator. The motivator is that Taiwanese people are great people. It's hard to find a place that has the perfect combination of temperature, of absolutely beautiful natural scenery. Mm -hmm. Just beautiful here. You know, it, it's, it's a great place. Have you found that there are many differences now compared to, what, what did we say, 26 years ago? <laughs> more yeah. MRT lines, that's really nice. Also, uh, more electric vehicles, mm -hmm. which uh, I'm a strong proponent of environmental issues and uh, it's great to see like the recycling programs are so oh, yeah. well developed too you know some some things haven't changed you know there's great tea and food and all the amazing uh, culinary things that make taiwan great those are still here there's even new new cool stuff too like the the flame steak and some of those things that uh, right. weren't around when i was here so yeah for sure especially maybe like Rayfong night market yeah. there's all kinds of modern food french food turkish food yeah so you can really probably get a lot more international exactly. cuisine compared yeah. to when you used to live here which is easier for my son too because you know he's 12. he's 12 <laughs> he's, okay he, he likes to eat his french fries and his hamburgers and stuff like that right yeah so it's nice that that stuff is around and back then, I'm sure it would have been difficult to even get a hamburger or pizza, right? It was all just McDonald's, basically. The right. fact that uh, some stores have ground beef here that we can make at home is great. Yeah, we're just happy that those things are pretty easy to find. Everything that we were worried that we couldn't find, we've been able to find. So why Kaohsiung? I mean, you said you, you lived in Taipei all those years ago, but now you're here in the south. We went to Taipei for six weeks first. Okay. And uh, it just wasn't for us. The weather was cold and rainy especially this time of year and yeah and we knew that like mm -hmm. we went there on purpose kind of first to see okay let's see what the weather's like in january because we remembered it wasn't the best and uh you know we still have lots of great friends in mm -hmm. taipei so we wanted to see look is taipei the place for us and now that we're down in Kaohsiung and we see it here man we love it here it's more relaxed a more chill vibe just a nice sort of standard of living and a nice yeah. pace of living and there's gorgeous beaches nearby mm -hmm. and mountains and you name it. It's really rather pleasant, isn't it? It in is, Gaoshan. it really is. Yeah. And you know what, it's, it's uh, to get a little bit of geography here, it's in that special savanna zone, which there aren't lots of cities in that zone. And it creates just this perfect habitable environment. <laughs> I know summers are hot. Uh, just even, you wait. <laughs> but it just makes it a pleasant place to live. And just because we're here on this street, uh, one of the things that I love about Taiwan is they really do a good job of preserving the old buildings yeah. and the history. So like, for example, this would be the old Japanese train station. I mean, cool. this building likely hasn't changed in dozens and dozens of years, decades. So what else can you tell us about yourself? I love playing music. Play okay. banjo. Nice. Guitar. Maybe we'll see some of that in the videos at some point. Yeah, I play guitar as well. We should uh, jam sometime. Yeah, well, that's a plan. That's definitely a plan. Um, I also am big into running. I really like running. I might try and get uh, into marathon shape sometime in the next year. We'll see how that goes. Before we end the video, I wanted to ask you a couple rapid fire questions. Oh geez, here we go. Favorite Taiwanese food, I have to ask. Sui jian bao. Sui jian bao. Yeah. And do you like stinky tofu? Yes. I haven't had it in over, since 2010, so that might be a video mm. that I do in the future to see if I can still handle the stinky tofu. And besides Kaohsiung or Taipei, do you have a favorite place in Taiwan? Hualien. Beautiful, but it's just, for a 12 year old boy, a little too sleepy. Yeah, I was gonna say, I mean, if you if you really love Hualien, you could probably easily find a job there. Yeah, but for my for my son, he needs to have people around that are his own age that, you know, are foreigners, more foreigners and whatnot. And Kaohsiung is a good kind of balance point for that. For sure. And last question. You were a police officer back in Canada. You probably say that would that was your career. Sure. Yeah, that's fair. Any plans to do any policing work here in Taiwan? <laughs> At this point, no. Okay. I think you have to be a Taiwanese citizen, which uh, I'm not. But who knows? Maybe I'll reach out to them and just see uh, see if they have any any need for me. We'll see. Because I mean, you can maybe teach them how to speak English in a more professional manner. I like think being they, a police yeah, officer yourself. I think they speak pretty well already. But you know, yeah. any help that I could give would be an honor, really. Mm -hmm. All right, man. Well, if you guys have any more questions for Noel, 
put them right down in the comment section. And do go over, subscribe to his channel, check out his videos. You speak mostly in Mandarin, right? That's right. On and your channel. Yeah, my wife and my son don't, but uh, got the translations there if anyone needs them. Nice. All right, man. Well, great to meet you. Yeah, great to meet you. And uh, thank you guys for watching. Please give this video a like, subscribe, and I will see you next time. See you later, man. Bye-bye. <laughs>